Hello everybody, this is Michael from the Board Games Chronicle. <coughs> Welcome to already fourth scenario for the Pacific War. Fantastic game from the Mark Herman. We play the engagement scenarios. In the first scenario, we learned how to do the airstrikes. It was Pearl Harbor. In the second scenario, we focused on Savo Island and it was the learning of how the naval battle works. First scenario, it was a Wake Island. We did the amphibious invasion. And today we are going to the ground combat, of course, with some air support. And the scenario we, we discussed today will be regarding the Burma. So here is our scenario in the scenario book. Yeah, engagement scenario, invasion of Burma, February 1942. It's of course, again, solitary scenarios. It will take us about 15 minutes. Uh, let me show you the situation which we have on the map. Here we have a large Japanese base with a plane. Uh, here we have small Japanese base with some troops which will be attacking and some planes. So here it is. Here we have a base with a, second, uh, with a Burma division. Here we would have yeah, some regiments, some divisions, and this is Rangoon. Okay. Here we have flying tigers. So the Chinese units, uh, actually Americans in the Chinese army. And here we have a really hard struck plane. I think we should have five hits here. If I'm not mistaken, just let me find it here. Yeah. We have all in all five bases here. One, two, three, four, five. And behind we have a jungle. It will be impo important because jungle will have an impact on the ground combat and also on the movement. So I just leave the troops that way so it's much clearly visible. What the scenario tells us, uh, we'll have uh, advantage on Japanese side in both battle cycles. We have two battle cycles, so the lightning conditions will be day. <clears throat> As we have two battle cycles, it will be day a.m. and day p.m., simple like this. And all ground units will be able to move in both battle cycles. The victory conditions are pretty simple. If Japanese occupy Rangoon at the end of the second battle cycle, they win. If they don't, they lose. We'll be going through a couple of the rules, so maybe I will take this as a reference and we'll be rolling here. Uh, yep, um, I think we are ready to start. The Birma invasion, February 1942, is just about to start. Here we have battle cycle with all the rounds. Just a reminder, we go through this line. This is for the engagement scenarios, this is for battle scenarios. This is for the campaign scenarios and this is for the strategic scenarios. It shows you which rules and which phases you use in each type of both scenario. We start with the lightning and as per the scenario rules, uh, it's uh, day. So there are no, um, actually, no impact on the, on the uh, search, airstrikes and so on and so forth. Then we have advantage determination. In advantage determination, uh, we also don't have to do anything because the scenario tells us Japanese have advantage. Then we have advantage movement. So advantage player, Japanese can move grand units and naval units. We don't move the air units in the advantage movement. So what we'll do, we'll of course move those two divisions and attack this division. We'll talk about all of those things on the cheats in a moment. <clears throat> Important note, uh, units from both sides, grant units from both sides, can occupy the same hex. If the battle will not be decisive, uh, they will be occupying the hex. Uh, yes, so let me put it here. Then we have uh, advan advantage air mission. So we'll be uh, performing the missions with those two planes. First of all, we'll use this tactical bomber, you see T here. Uh, the range is 16 to strike against the division, which is here. 
uh, the range is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's uh, uh, the air mission range uh, is 16 and we'll move 7 plus 7, 14. So this is fine. We are fine. Uh, let me just put the poor guys whom we're gonna bomb here. So uh, a reminder for everybody, you can also check this on, on the player aid. This is the air mission. Uh, let me put it here for time being. This is the air mission procedure. We start the air mission. Uh, we move missions our units. We will not be intercepted because we are not moving through any hex with the air units. So is air mission detected in or prior uh, to the target hex? This we'll check. <coughs> we are entering this hex, yeah? And we'll check whether uh, the, the, this grant unit or this base will detect us performing the search. And the search we have here. How do we do it? We look at this portion of, of, the, uh, of the map. So uh, we look at this portion. We'll search for error, and uh, if uh, I roll between uh, 0 and 5, will uh, this airplane will be detected. You see, search for air units, regardless of the color, detected. Uh, for the grant units, for the naval units, we'll be disclosing some of the information. For air units, it simply says detected. So we roll for the Americans. Uh, what impact would it have? Uh, uh, simply whether the flag combat will be prior to the uh, bombardment, because we'll do the airstrike, of course, against this unit, or after the bombardment. Oh, let's roll. So the unit is detected. Let's come back here. This air unit is detected. So we have cup procedure. In order to perform cup procedure, we would need, we would have to have a, a air unit here. We don't have any. We have flag procedure. Flag procedure, uh, we combine the uh, value of the, um, uh, of the anti-air strength of the base and the ground unit. Uh, in the middle, we have one and here one. This is the anti-air strength. So we'll be rolling with a strength of two and we'll be rolling on the flag uh, combat flag unimproved, the improved flag starts in February 1943 for Allies. So this is a flag and uh, we need to roll up to two to have any hits on this airplane. Let us roll seven, so no hit. Oh, we have a nice sun coming down at our, at our board. Okay, fine, let's, let's leave it. So now we have an airstrike, so our Plane uh, has 16 range, has uh, two anti-air combat, five anti-naval combat, and five anti-ground combat. We'll be attacking that Burma uh, division, so our uh, strike will be. Uh, let me just check bombardment versus ground units. You see here, and we'll probably have a. Uh, uh, check of a troop check if, if we manage to, to roll less than five strength five and we'll be going to the bombardment against ground units. Rolling. One. Let's see what one says. We have five, we hit on one. We have air versus ground unit, troop check. How do we perform a troop check? Uh, troops check uh, uh, quality modifiers. I think it's described here. We'll not be going into details. Enough to say, if you look at the grant unit, you see his troop quality here, two, anti air here, and 10 is its uh, steps. So we now roll one die. If you roll zero, one, two, the troop check is passed. If not, uh, they will be broken. So they become broken. This was a successful air mission. Now we come back. We can't come back here because this base has a capacity of only six uh, steps to be able to alert, uh, to, to be able to activate. And here we have six steps and six steps here. So 
now we'll come back here okay let me clean it up for time being we have a broken British unit what shall we do with this plane I think we'll uh, try to catch those um, uh, those planes with a full strength unit here on ours will have the range of eight so we go one two three four we're not going through this we don't want to be detected of course again as we enter the hex we roll for a search zero five they will be spotted but not only spotted but what is more those planes will be alerted and will not catch them on the ground and will not be able to stray them but let's see what will come three so we are spotted yeah so we are spotted so we'll have we'll go now through the uh, air procedure we are here defense strike uh, uh, we have here uh, is air mission detected in or prior to target hex yes it is so we have designate strike targets uh, my strike target uh, will be of course uh, those planes and what we do here we have a cap procedure in the cap procedure maybe i can show it to you in this it's important mm, here, it is, yeah. here we have a cap procedure 287 in essence what does it say uh, we alerted those planes and uh, we have to designate one fighter unit this is a fighter unit as a cap unit combat air patrol uh, so we designate that guys as a cap unit uh, okay uh, we have an option to, to designate we want to designate them as a cap unit now uh, we determine whether or not the mission player so the japanese designates an escort uh, yes we want to designate the escort because then they will be fighting together otherwise uh, if we don't designate that one as an escort those guys will be hitting us without us hitting them back and then we can attack the base we don't want to attack the base we want to have a pure combat between between the planes which will be uh, simultaneous yeah this is this is what will happen so the air combat will be conducted because we have a designated cap unit and we have a designated escort unit. Rolling for the defender, rolling for the attacker, and let's compare this. Uh, sorry, four. it was four, I think. Uh, strength five, we rolled four, and uh, yes. Uh, first of all, uh, defenders. So this is cap versus coordinated mission. Uh, they have six strength. Uh, no, uh, they have six strength. No hit. So uh, the cap versus coordinated. It was American part, and now the Japanese is coordinated strike versus cap. And we rolled four uh, on the strength of five. So we go here. We will, and this is a one hit. So one hit on those planes. And they come back here. And we come back here. That will be all for air missions. Yeah. We don't have a naval combat, so now we have bombardment. We don't have a naval unit, so there will be no bombardment. And we have a ground combat. In this ground combat, only in this hex, the things will happen. Let's put all the units here. So uh, let me put Japanese to the side. Mm -hmm. So we have a broken uh, British division. Troop quality is half, so this is one. And this will be the leading Japanese unit with a trip troop quality of six. Uh, in order to resolve the ground combat, we first check the ratio, the troop quality ratio. 
So the uh, defender troop quality is one, attacker troop quality is six. So we are at the column 18. Okay, guys. That's gonna end really bad. Let me just mark it here. So this is 18. Now, uh, we would need to modify for the jungle. The jungle modifies, I think, by three. Let me check it. Uh, okay, here it is. Here it is. Yes, if a combat occurs in a mixed or mountain hex, it's free. If combat occurs in a jungle hill, it's two. So we modify by two. We go 17, 16. So we are still here. And yeah, okay, fine. So we will be now uh, rolling rolling on this uh, column. Just a reminder, if, uh, the first number is the losses on the attacker, the second number are the losses on the defender. Uh, the number of um, steps is way above 17, so we look at the first lines of box. Uh, we don't have any modifier for the size, uh, here we have uh, seven steps. Here we have ten steps. So yeah, we don't we don't have any modifiers here. Mm, sorry, one more correction. It should be four hits. Four hits here. Yeah. That way, just put the incorrect number from my previous previous attempt at this scenario. So that's that's how how does it look like. Uh, this is 8, this is 10, 18 to 10, so there is no modifier. We roll a die. Zero, my goodness. Zero is seven hits on this poor unit. It's almost destroyed. And it also means it has a mandatory uh, retreat. Let me check now the mandatory retreat portion. So, <clears throat> a unit that is already broken, previous to retreating, may retreat one hex when receiving a mandatory retreat result. Yes, the unit loses as many steps as called for by the CRT. So, seven plus one additional step. So, they lost eight in total. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now, we are retreating to this hex to run Goon, of course. We will be able now to, to pursue them. Mm. Let me just put them all in place. Here and here. Let's see if I manage to pursue them successfully. In order to pursue, oh, they are broken, of course. Here, pursuit. We will be pursuing with uh, yeah with a whole stack, but the leading one would be uh, was of a higher troop quality. Uh, if we pass a troop quality check, uh, uh, we as Japanese uh, can move any or all of the units involved in the combat, and we'll take one additional step loss. This is fine, uh, but what is more important. Uh, the retreating unit takes additional losses equal to one half uh, rounded down, so three more steps uh, of, of casualties. That would mean destroying this division. So let's roll less than seven, zero to six, and then we do the pursuit. Yeah, we rolled one. Pursuit is successful, so one more hit here. We have five hits. And sorry, that division is destroyed. Simply, just let us mark it. It's destroyed. We enter Rangoon. I, for the sake of clarity, let me leave it here, and that ends the ground combat. I think with space I would need to check in the rules because uh, there was a grand combat 
here it will be interdicted i think that was the word destroyed yeah or not fully destroyed it can be still repaired but uh, not operational and now what we have grand combat airfield repair will not be going for this rally we don't have broken units uh, disadvantage movement do we want to move no we don't want to leave the rangoon as the <coughs> british and this is air missions. Do we want to do any kind of air missions? Uh, most probably we would. Mm, let me try the air mission with those. Oh, although we have, yeah, let me try the air mission uh, with the Chinese. They will fly here. We have already one hit. We check for the detection. We enter the hex with the grant units. We check for the detection 05. They are not detected, so they can now attack the grant troops. They have they will attack that unit. They have a strength of five. And uh, not this color. A strength of five. Nine, I think nothing. So they will simply come back. We have one more unit here. Let them also come here. A detection on 05 by Japanese. Not detected. And they roll on the one. So they zero on one. Uh, airstrike versus uh, ground unit. Nothing. So both attacks were unsuccessful for the Japanese. But all the units will be now alerted. <sighs> That way, uh, yeah, we went through the disadvantage movement missions. We go to the second battle cycle. We determine the lightning. The lightning is still day, PM, advantage, determination. We have Japanese advantage, advantage movement. We'll not do any movement, but we'll do the airstrikes. We are preparing for the battle of Rangoon. So the airstrikes, of course, will go here. Let us do the preparation already for the Battle of Rangoon. You see the leading unit of the British will be most probably those guys, the best troop quality. So we want to bombard them. Uh, let me see if I have a reach. I should with this both guys. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. I have, and I'm not moving through any hex with enemy units. So we now roll for detection. Again, zero 05, remember, uh, zero 05, not detected. So we can uh, now do the bombardment with five. Five is here. We look for roll of less than five. And this is air versus grant unit. So we look at this line. One, we rolled one, five, one, we go with the green, and we go to T, so we again roll for the quality check, zero, four, nothing happens, five and more, uh, they are broken. Nine, so they are broken. I should use the green broken side, of course, not the yellow one. Sorry for this. Mm -hmm. And do I want to do anything with those guys? Yeah, let me try to attack those. First of all, would they be detected? Yes, they are. The flag combat is 2 plus 1 plus 1, 3. Oh, a lot. So let's see how the uh, flag combat versus air goes. 3, that would be one hit, I think. Flag versus air, yes. First hit on those guys. <clears throat> and now we attack with a strength of four. Uh, that grant unit, uh, that the large one. Let's try us to break it. Uh, so this is air versus grant unit. Yeah. Rolling. Zero. Nice roll. Strength of four, zero. Uh, this is troop quality check, so we do the troop quality check here. I'm afraid they might not survive it. 
freely failed it. Uh, so uh, let me mark it like this. Those two units are broke. Yeah, the mission finished. And now we have a fight. We have a. Uh, we don't have a naval combat. We don't have bombardment. We go to the ground combat. So this is the battle for Rangoon. Uh, we start with determining validic units. Uh, this would be that unit and that unit. Six and two. So this uh, the advantage will not be so huge as previously. Six attacker to defend there. So we go to fifteen. Let me mark with this. In. And then Rangoon is in jungle, so we move to to that side. Okay. Uh, as for the size, four, six, and eight steps. Fourteen. Okay, so it doesn't go uh, above or beyond those those things. Good. Now we roll. We roll on the thirteen. If we roll. Uh, less than six, six or less, uh, then we won the scenario. Yes, four. And on four, we have here, we have a hit on the leading unit and three hits here. Let me take those three hits. Yeah, one needs to be, I think, on the leading unit and two more on this large. Unit. Now they have to retreat <coughs> because they have to retreat. Those two units are getting another hit, each of them, because they are broken. And I will not be pursuing them, I think. No need for this. So that's more or less how, how the strength looks now. Okay, so they are retreating. They will be broken. Those guys will be here. Let me just put them here. Yeah, a big stack, I know. And our troops are entering the Rangoon. Again, I think we just destroyed the airbase during the fight. So let me mark it. The Rangoon is gone. And these are the British losses. Okay, thank you very much for being with me today. We presented to you the scenario, engagement scenario four for Pacific War, the Birma invasion. It went according to plan. Uh, the Rangoon uh, has fallen. There were minimal losses on the Japanese side, two steps on one of the divisions and one air step. The losses on the British side were much higher. One step of the air units, if I remember correctly, and 15 of the grand units. Uh, I hope you like it. In the next video, we'll go further into Burma. We'll be attacking here, and I will show you some tricks connected to the ground combat and how the mountains can prevent it. Thank you for today. Uh, if you like the video, please give thumbs up. If you would like to see more content like this, kindly please subscribe. Thank you and bye.